Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and today we're going to talk about sights and specifically handgun sights. Now, before we talk about what kind of sights we might want to use, let's talk about sights in general. Why are there sights on a gun? on a handgun. Well, many, many moons ago, you know, back when the earth was flat and dinosaur roamed, they had, <laughs> they figured out, well, in order to hit your target with that gun, you, you need to align the muzzle with the target. Okay, and that's fantastic. You know, you need to align the muzzle of the pistol with your target. However, when your gun is pointed at the target in your hand, what can't you see? You can't see the muzzle. So what they decided is, hmm, we should put something way up at the front of it, right over the muzzle, so that the guy who's holding on to it knows exactly where the muzzle is pointed at all times. So they started out by putting little uh, bumps of steel, or they would just put a bump in the, uh, in the barrel. Then they got real fancy, and they started putting brass beads and gold beads and so forth. And they eventually evolved into what we now you know, have as modern handgun sights. But the whole point of sights on a handgun is to allow you to, indic or to index the muzzle of the gun on the target. So you know where the muzzle is pointed. Okay, that's the whole purpose of a front sight on your gun, or sights in general. All right. right now, today in America, we have a greater variety of handgun sights than ever before. We've got so many different kinds of sights. We have tritium sights, fiber optic sights, gold bead sights. We've got combination tritium and fiber optic. We have, you know, flat steel. We have color-coded inserts. We got all kinds of sights. We have so many different kinds of sights right now available to us. You'd think that no shooter on planet Earth would ever miss a target because we, our sights are so advanced. Mm. Well, that is true. We do have advanced sights, but unfortunately, a lot of people think that if I go ahead and buy the, you know, I'll go ahead and pay the upcharge when I order my gun and I'll get tritium night sights, and then it'll be easier for me to hit my target because now I have tritium night sights or I have fiber optic sights or whatever. Well, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter what kind of sights you have on the gun, if your trigger control is a mess, you're probably not going to hit what you're aiming at. But trigger control is a topic for another day. Today, let's talk about handgun sights. Now, I'm wearing my XS sights hat, and this pistol that I have in my hand right now is a SIG model 226. It's a 9mm. It's the original version. It's the double action to single action. And this gun right here has XS sights on it. Now, uh, disclosure, a moment of disclosure, Excess Sights currently does sponsor Student of the Gun. Yay for them, because that's a smart move on their part. Now, I've known Excess Sights, I've known about them uh, since 1997. Ashley Emerson, the founder, the original founder of the company, uh, introduced me to Excess Sights, and I put them on my first duty pistol, or one of my first duty pistols when I was a police officer. And from 1997 all the way up to present day, I have carried excess sights in some form or configuration on my pistol, either as a police officer or as a bodyguard. So I've been using excess sights for a long time. I really believe in them. Now, excess sights really bunge people up. And I find it funny that they've been around as long as they have, and people still get bunged up about excess sights that still breaks their chi and they, they oh you you can shoot real close up like across the hallway but other than that you can't shoot accurately with excess sights and my friend James Yeager likes to say he goes look if you can't shoot your gun accurately with excess sights you probably can't shoot your gun accurately at all roughly paraphrased from James there uh, it's probably something like if you can't freaking shoot your gun with excess sights you can't shoot your gun something similar to that so but why is the excess sight like it is why is it a big dot well, the dot, uh, Ashley Emerson, he developed the handgun sight from the original express sights that they use on African big game rifles. Okay, a, uh, a big old Cape Buffalo is about to turn you into a human pancake, and you've got to put him down quick, fast, in a hurry. You throw the rifle up, find that, that big white marble bead, and kaboom, put that guy down, or, or a lion or an elephant or whatever. And uh, so he said, hmm, I bet we could put those on handguns because, hey, if you're using a handgun... To stop a human predator from killing you, that's kind of a high stress situation too. Not maybe not as high stress as an elephant about to squish you, but very close. Okay, uh, very similar. So he developed them originally with just the white dot. Now, why is it a dot? It's not just a circle. It's actually a sphere. And the reason they made a sphere, they made a sphere because what does a sphere have? 
it has a greater surface area than it would if it was flat. And why is that surface area important? Well, the white dot surface area actually reflects more light. And that's the whole point. Human beings, our eyes, we need light to see, don't we? Obviously we do. So the more light you're able to reflect, ambient light, it's all around us, off of the front sight, the easier it is to see. And that's the whole purpose of by, behind using a dot versus a square or a blade or what have you. Matter of fact, a lot of blades, like the old blades on pistols, sometimes you throw them up and they would disappear in front of you. They'd go invisible. You're like, whoa, where'd my front sight go? Because it was thin. It wasn't reflecting any light. Okay, so the, the excess big dot sight. Now, the big dot sights currently in their current configuration do have tritium in them, uh, which makes them a little bit easier to find. Now, let's talk about color real quick. Why did excess decide to put a white dot why not yellow, safety green, orange, red, purple, whatever you're into, why didn't they make it color? Well, because these are meant to be 24 seven in all light configurations. Now, human beings, as you lose light, as the sun goes down, when we turn the lights off, what does everything become? Everything becomes different shades of black, white, and gray. That's it, you lose the ability to see color as you lose available light. Now, just because it's dark, does that mean well, I won't have to shoot anybody or use my gun because it's dark now, right? I'll wait till the sun comes up. No, no, a lot of shootings, defensive shootings occur during low light situations. Um, and statistically, if you look at the FBI stats, you'll find that the majority of defensive handgun shoots are during hours or of either low light because you're indoors or low light because it was nighttime. So it's pretty important to be able to find your front sight in poor light. And that's why it's white because once you lose the ability to see color, you can still see white. You can't see orange, you can't see red, you can't see yellow or pink or purple or whatever, but you can still see white. And that's the whole purpose. That is why people always write letters to excess sites. I know I've talked to them, they're like, you know, we get letters every week, make an orange dot, make a yellow dot, you know, make a red dot. People who like red sites, a lot of you guys out there, you big, you revolver guys, because you know, what have you got? You've got a, a ramp and it has interchangeable uh, colors. You can put orange and red and yellow and all that in there. But where do you shoot your guns? All right, red dot guys, you go out when it's a nice sunny afternoon on the range and you're like, well, I go out on the range in sunny afternoon or I go on my indoor range and all the lights are on, I can see my red front sight just fine. <laughs> That's nice if you're only going to be attacked by vermin when it's nice and sunny and the light is good. Okay, Most of the time it's not that situation so you want to be able to find it. And the truth of the matter is uh, when the, as far as the color spectrum goes, as you lose light, the first color you lose the ability to discern or see is red. And the last one you lose the ability to see is that yellow green, that kind of safety green. Okay, so if you're going to make any color at all, like you just have to have a color because you won't be satisfied until we give you a color. Okay, if you have to have a color, it should be kind of that yellow green, that safety green, because that's the last color your eyeball loses. But the truth of the matter is, eventually it will lose it completely in the dark and it'll just become a shade of gray. So that is why that whole reason explanation right there is why excess sights, front sights are white. Now the tritium is green, but the tritium glows in the dark because it is radioactive. So uh, there's a little bit of a difference there. It produces its own light because it's radioactive. Anyway, now, when you talk about shooting a handgun, there are two things that you have to do to shoot a handgun very, very well. And consistently, you need to find your front sight and you have, need to have a smooth and deliberate trigger press. You need to not disturb that front sight and make it jump up and down like it's having a seizure while you're pressing the trigger. Okay, if you can hold the gun still enough to press the trigger and to make it go boom, your shots will go where they need to go, regardless of what's on top of the gun. Now, if you need to indicate, or to, I'm sorry, if you need to put your muzzle on target in poor light, you need some type of an indicator, such as a big dot, a big tritium dot right here, uh, up on the front, to put it in the middle of your target. Uh, unfortunately, most of you guys out there in the audience don't have access to a shoot house or a Hogan's Alley or so forth. The vast majority of all shooting ranges will only let you shoot in the daytime or when the lights are on, okay? Uh, very few of them will let you shoot at night. 
uh, or in a darkened condition. Now, if you're lucky, if you have a, uh, a local indoor range where the guy's pretty cool, he might let you shut some of the lights off to simulate a low light or a heavy shadow situation, and that's a good way to go. But if you shoot on an outdoor range uh, and you have to use a public range, most of them will never ever let you shoot in the dark or reduce light because it's too dangerous. Uh, but when are you going to have to use your gun to save your life? Hmm, probably when it's dark. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people that have to use firearms to save their own lives in the dark, the first time they shoot in the dark is when they're saving their own life. So it's always a good idea to train and practice beforehand. If you have the opportunity or the ability to go to a school, to go to a training academy that has an, an indoor shoot house that will let you shoot at night, uh, most schools won't let you do night shooting until you've taken like level two or level three or an advanced level because they want to make sure you're not doing crazy stuff in the dark because they can't see you. But if you have the opportunity to do that, I would recommend doing it because it's a whole nother ball of wax shooting in the dark in deep heavy shadow with flashlights and so forth than it is shooting during bright, you know, sunny Sunday afternoon. And that's really where excess sights come into play. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if all you're ever going to do is go to a range on a bright, sunny Sunday afternoon, shoot at a target from five yards, if that's all you're ever going to do with a gun, you don't need excess sights. Just use the ones that are on there from the factory, and you're good to go. But if you ever think you might have to save your own life with a handgun, you're probably going to be moving. The bad guy's probably going to be moving. You're going to be a little bit of exci excited. The light will probably be poor. You might be knocked on your butt. Okay, That's a bad situation. That's not the time to play I wish I could find my front sight game. And if you want to find your front sight in pretty much every light condition available, the excess sight will do it for you. All right, until next time, I'm Paul Markle, your favorite professor. And where are you going to go to get all things Student of the Gun? Well, of course, you're going to go to studentofthegun.com. See you there.